to be honest with you. I didn't I'm either. Sure. I if didn't I didn't, either. there's a lot of people out there that didn't even know about it either. So right now we are looking at a window for earthquakes, at least in this area of Southern California. Is that what you're saying in Northern California? California, if you look at the map right now, it looks pretty quiet. Um, I just like glanced at it on the USGS map. There's not any red squares on it at this moment. Let me read my little anti-prediction that I wrote on this site. It's Earthquake Epicenter. You Google www.earthquakeepicenterforum.com slash index dot lowercase php. And that'll take you to our site. And I I entitled it Anti-Prediction for California Earthquake on March 19th. Two short paragraphs. I, I feel I'm glad I did this. It just some of these emails I've been getting last night. Kelly, Kelly, is it happening Saturday? It just bugged me. Okay, it's real short and sweet. Here we go. No, uh, March 19th, day of supermoon. No significant quake for California. By that I mean something that's going to be hitting the news. Oh my God, California, you know, 7.0, blah, blah. 100% probability, then that's for my anti prediction. Probability, 100% chance, no significant quake for California. Notes, many people are claiming on this very day there will be a noteworthy quake in our golden state, meaning March 19th. Be, been getting emails from people getting frightened. My anti-prediction record is 100% accurate. I only make these when I get strong vibes that a prediction will not happen. I'm not saying a quake will not happen this month or next month in California, and I have forecasted there is a good chance we will be next to have a major quake in the upcoming months and possibly before the summer. But to pinpoint it to one 24-hour period, unless there is a spike and AOL and AWOL, AWOL and pets via, I go to Tabby Tracker Fido Finder and it, <laughs> um, you, you know, you can type in a zip code and you can see how many reports of lost and found dogs there are. And I do that for San Jose when I'm, when I'm watching Tabby um, Tracker and Fido Finder. I love it. I know. And what you do, you can type in any zip code in the United States and it, it could tell you how many reports of lost and found dogs and cats there are. And when these spike a lot, oftentimes this is a very good tool to show you that there may be an oncoming quake. And I do this um, on a regular basis when I think there's going to be a quake in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I said, unless there's a spike in these uh, AWOL pets um, or an aggressive earthquake swarm. So let's just say hypothetically, when we get off the phone today and tomorrow, What's today? No, today, Friday. If all of a sudden we get a lot of micro, micro earthquakes like ones, twos in the Bay Area or offshore Northern California or Southern California, if we just get a swarm of them, all right, then I would have to say, gee, maybe Jim Berklin is right. Maybe other people are right, you know, but in my opinion, it will not happen right on the day of the full moon tomorrow. Caveat. Threes and fours, these are minor quakes, are certainly possible anywhere in California that day, tomorrow. Offshore Northern California, San Francisco Bay Area, Tahoe Region, Southern California, since we are ranked the number four shaky state. So tomorrow, if we get a 4.0, I can hear Brooklyn, you know, all right, I, you know, I got my quake, but come on, a 4.0, give me a break. That's going to be so nothing. Yeah, I mean, we get 4.0s, it's very common in California. 3.0s, very common. And if it's a shallow quake, you know, um, one mile, two mile, three miles, um, yeah, it'll be felt for sure. Even twos can be felt without a doubt. Um, but I'm not going to be worried if we have a 4.0. Um, so I, I'm holding my ground, pun intended, that uh, no, no major quake. Tomorrow. Now watch, a major quake will hit Tahoe. <laughs> I'll be freaking out and saying, he's the man, he's the man. Well, and I'll be <laughs> eating crow and he'll probably make me pay him. <clears throat> but, but we did not make um, a, a bet on this one. I don't even think I'm going to tell him that I made an anti-prediction. But he is not the only one to say, 
you know, that a quake's going to happen tomorrow. There are other people out there, I'm sure. But are they yeah. using the same tools that he uses oh, having to do with the moon. Tides? Yeah, if you just Google supermoon, you'll see that um, great earth changes can happen on that day for sure. So a lot of astrologers and sensitives, I'm sure if you go on to the other sites, and I'm not the only site, I'm not the only one, I'm sure there's other people saying that. And also when Jim Perklin makes a prediction, um, people do listen. And he does have a good accuracy rate. He really, really does with his eight-day windows. Um, you know, and he has a newsletter, and each month he makes the same prediction where, you know, a 7.0 is going to hit somewhere in the ring of fire. Often it does because the ring of fire, that's where 80% of all the uh, uh, major great quakes happen. And it's a great area. You know, it's a horseshoe in the Pacific, in the Pacific Ocean, like a horseshoe. If you do, if you look at it as a horseshoe, the whole region, you know, Japan, go all the way around to the Lucian Islands, Alaska, all the way down California. I mean, it's in New Zealand. It's a huge area. So he, he says that every month there's going to be a 7.0 plus. Um, Oregon and Washington is um, another one of his regions. Uh, Southern California, I think it's, I believe it's greater uh, Los Angeles within a 140 mile radius. And Mount Diablo, which he drove me up to once outside, that's in the East Bay of the Bay Area, and a 140 mile radius that a quake will happen. And he usually says a 3.5 to a 6.0 um, in those areas, um, in those three areas and then a 7.0 plus in the Pacific Ring of Fire. And that's that's how that's that's his theory and he bases it again on the high tides, um the lunar cycles, um new moon, full moon each month. And of course, um a lot of people like he believes the super moon things can intensify. And then we do uh, there is a thing also there was um a mass die-off of fish in Redondo Beach recently and also right. in British Columbia. And that is one reason also why I kind of upped my West Coast prediction. Even though um, on the radio show January 3rd, I said California's next in line, those fish did not die off yet. We had the fish dying off over in southern, um, in the southeast, in the Gulf, you know, by um, the Arkansas swarm, the guy swarm in the New Madrid zone. So it's kind of strange all of a sudden, you know, they had, they have an earthquake swarm in Arkansas, and that's when all the fish were dying off and the birds were dropping out of the sky. Right. And then all of a sudden we have our mass fish die off. Now there was an earthquake. There were they called it the Guy Swarm. It's still happening in Arkansas. Got it's near Guy. They call it the Guy Swarm, and but and it did play out a four point seven which is very strong for in that region because the bedrock's different and it was felt. That 4.7 on February 28th this year was reported felt by the USGS in 17 states, 17 states. So, you know, the fish dying off, and we don't know why. A lot of people are thinking that, um, yeah, you know, the West Coast could be in danger. But again, I guess my biggest gripe is just to narrow it down to one day or even to eight days, unless something else escalates, I'm just not going to buy it. I have a question about the fact that there are so many earthquakes happening all over the world all the time in the ranges that you gave, the smaller ranges, 3.3, 4.5, etc. And so even though it has been said that you can't predict earthquakes, they can't be predicted from a geological perspective. And of course, Jim Berkland says you can. And obviously, at the higher levels, you can predict them with more precision because we know that at the lower levels, they're going on all the time. The question is, can you predict the ones that are going to impact us? And right. that's the ones we're interested in, right? Right. Now, when I interviewed some of the seismologists and scientists at the USGS for the Man Who Predicts Earthquakes book, they were, they were nice to me. And um, basically, they said, they still stand by, you can't predict earthquakes. And um, I said, but what about the animals? What about the animals? Like, they sensed the oncoming tsunami in the Indian Ocean quake in 2004. And they sort of gave credit to that but not totally. 
and they said that animals are unreliable. Now, I do agree with that. I mean, you know, my cat, like I said, he's got a good track record for predicting predicting quakes here in Tahoe and in the Bay Area. The 5.6 um, October 30th um, in Alum Rock, San Jose, um, back in 2007, my cat definitely gave me a heads up, and I was on a lot of media because it was a total hit for me. And I give credit to my cat, and plus a bear was in my front yard. I've never seen a bear. 